Good morning, everybody. Dick and David is not able to be here this morning with us because he's not feeling very good. The intention of the Mass is for the people of the parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever Reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was lying in the sanctuary of the Lord, where the ark of God was, when the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. He answered, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Once again the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am since you called me. He replied, I did not call you, my son. Go back and lie down. Samuel had not yet no knowledge of the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Once again the Lord called the third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, here I am since you called me. Eli then understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. And he said to Samuel, go and lie down. And if someone calls, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord then came and stood by, calling as he had done before. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel grew up with the Lord, and the Lord was with him, and let no word of his fall to the ground. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come, I come to, to do your will. will. I waited. I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. 
He put a new song into my mouth. Praise of our God. Here I am, Lord. Lord, I, I come, come down to do your, to will. your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for a holocaust and victim. Instead, here I am. Here I, I am, am, Lord. Lord I, I come, come to, to do your, your will. will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law, in the depth of my heart. Here, Here I am, I am Lord, Lord. I, I come, come to do your, your will. will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Here, Here I, I am, Lord, Lord I, I come, come to do your will. will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The body is not meant for fornication. It is for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. God who raised the Lord from the dead will by his power raise you up too. You know surely that your bodies are members making up the body of Christ. Anyone who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Keep away from fornication. All the other sins are committed outside the body. But to fornicate is to sin against your own body. Your body, you know, is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. Since you received him from God, you are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. That is why you should use your body for the glory of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to proclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. alleluia. <coughs> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed, and John stared hard at him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned around, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you live? Come and see, he replied. So they went and saw where he lived and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of these two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, meaning rock. The Gospel of the Lord. We can probably all think of people who open doors for us in life. Perhaps at a crucial moment in our lives, they pointed us in the right direction. They were an influence for good on us. Maybe they shared with us some gift they possessed or allowed us to benefit from an experience they had or some discovery they made. We appreciate these people because they had the freedom and the generosity to give something worthwhile away for the benefit of others rather than keeping it to themselves. That is how John the Baptist is portrayed in the Gospel reading this Sunday. He had come to recognize Jesus as a very special revelation of God's love. Far from keeping that discovery to himself, he shared it with his own disciples, even though he knew that in doing so he was going to lose them to Jesus. 
He pointed two of his disciples in the direction of Jesus. He opened a door for them, even though it would mean a loss to himself. A short while later, one of those two disciples, Andrew, did for his brother Simon what John the Baptist had done for him. He led his brother to Jesus. In the first reading, Eli did something similar for Samuel by helping him to hear God's call. The readings this Sunday put before us three people, Eli, John the Baptist, and Andrew, each of whom in different ways pointed others in the right direction and led others to the one who is the source of life. We could probably all identify a John the Baptist or an Andrew or an Eli in our own lives people who in some way or another brought us to the Lord or helped us to recognize and receive the Lord who was present to us. We might think first of our own parents who brought us to the baptismal font as infants. As early as possible into our own lives, they wanted to say to us, what John the Baptist said to his disciples, look, there is the Lamb of God. Then in the following years, they helped us to grow in our relationship with the Lord, into whom we had been baptized, bringing us to the church, praying with us, reading stories from the gospel to us, taking us to see the creep as Christmas, placing an image of the Lord of one of the saints in our room, helping us to prepare for the sacraments of the Eucharist and confirmation. If we were fortunate, we might have had a good religion teacher at school who took us a step further in our relationship with the Lord and who enabled us to come and see in the words of the gospel. Today we give thanks for the John the Baptist figures we have encountered in the course of our lives. We thank God for all those who were concerned enough about us to share something of their vision with us and who remained loyal to us even when we failed to take the path they pointed out to us. We also acknowledge that the Lord calls each of us to become a John the Baptist for others. Our baptism calls each of us to live lives that help to point others in the direction God wants them to take. We cannot become all that God wants us to be on our own. We need each other. God guides us through others and guides others through us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontus Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. No beating prayers.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as a Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending thine spirit upon them like a dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Mark our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form, a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. <coughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of Christ. Party 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 of Christ. Christ. Party of Christ. Party of Christ. Party of Christ. Party of Christ.
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Please remember the second collection for retired priests. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended.